Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. Uh, today, uh, we're going to dive into an interesting analogy that connects gardening principles with planning for early retirement. If you've ever grown a garden uh, or even enjoyed watching one bloom, uh, you'll see how closely the two are related. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll talk about planting the seeds. Just like in gardening, retirement starts with planting seeds early on. The earlier you start the seeds, the better your chances are of bountiful harvest. Now, I'm not going to say that anything is ever guaranteed. And so you may go through all of the rigor of planting the seeds, putting them in the ground, making sure that they're all in there the right way, and they still may not grow. But the longer that you plant the seeds... Uh, the higher likelihood that they're really going to take root, grow, and pr produce that bountiful harvest. Uh, when you're looking at retirement, those seeds are your investments, your 401ks, your employer-sponsored retirement plans, all of the things that we've talked about in other videos and that I'm sure you hear when you look for retirement advice online. Uh, it's also your savings. There's savings accounts. There's high interest savings accounts. There's a bunch of different savings accounts. And again, the purpose of this video is not necessarily to go through the specific types of savings accounts, but to really help you understand that these are all mechanisms that help your money grow over time to give you a higher likelihood of you retiring, whether it's retiring early, retiring on time or retiring, giving yourself a chance at any point in your life to retire. I do recognize that not everybody's going to retire early and it's, but I do think the more financial peace of mind we have, the better off we are. And the chances are that we'll find additional things to help us live our best lives. The other seed is your financial plans. As I said in another video, if you're looking to fix your roof, you call a roofer. If you have a leak in your plumbing, you call a plumber. And if you're looking to figure out the best way to most efficiently build wealth or to uh, have your money grow is to get a financial advisor, get a financial professional, somebody that could sit down and objectively take a look at your plan. Not saying you did anything wrong, but again, this is a person whose job it is not just to tell you where you are, but help you get to where you need to be and provide access to information that may not have necessarily existed. Uh, the long, and, and always remember that the longer they have to grow, the bigger the harvest. The, the longer you put your money into your 401ks at work and get the match, the longer you put money in the brokerage accounts, the longer you put money in savings, the money, longer you put money away, the more time it has to grow. Um, and I just say start early because every seed counts. It doesn't seem like much, but the longer you put money away, the less you actually need to put away on a month to month basis because the longer it has to grow. And so always remember, though, that just like some seeds need special care to sprout, your financial needs, whether it's a 401k, an IRA or other investment, needs attention and nurturing over time. So the way you start may not necessarily be the way you finish, but it's you have to pay special attention to what's going on based on the conditions, the factors in your own personal goals. Next, we'll talk about watering and nurturing, which translate into your regular contributions. Once your seeds are in the ground, it doesn't stop there. You can't just leave them there and expect the garden to grow. Uh, you need to water them. You need to nurture them. You need to make sure they have the correct amount of sunlight. And, and the same goes for your retirement savings. Regular contributions are like watering your garden. It's about consistency. Find an amount that you can consistently put away, or at least you can reasonably feel comfortable with consistently putting away that you don't need to touch. Um, make adjustments as you need to. A lot of times we get caught into the idea that, okay, I'm putting in $20 a month, $20 a month, $20 a month, and I'm going to do that forever. But let's say you get a raise. Let's say you win the lottery. Let's say something happens where you have additional funds. Uh, or let's say you're putting in $1,000 a month and something happens and you can't put in $1,000 a month. You can only put in 200 It's okay to adjust over time. And I'll tell you, in my own experience, there were times when I was putting in a bunch of money and there were times when I was putting in little because the fact is, is life happens and there's things that I had to pay for and there's emergencies that came up that I wasn't ready for. And I had to adjust my amount. But the key is, is don't stop. 
just consistently add to make sure that and make sure your investments are on on track. But make sure that you always keep in mind that consistency is the key. I was uh, this year I was planting some cucumbers and my cucumbers didn't do as well. And it was because I had inconsistent watering and I don't know exactly what caused the inconsistent watering. I think in the early in the season I was overwatering and so I cut it back and I was underwatering. And then I ended up with a, a cucumber plant that didn't produce the way that I wanted it to. Now it did produce, but it didn't produce the way that I wanted it to. And so if you put money into an investment account and you stop and then you withdraw the money and then you put more money in, that investment account is not going to perform the way you want it to over time. So you really have to be consistent. And, and remember, just like how different plants and vegetables need care, your financial goals might require different strategies. So diversify your investments. Think of it as planting a variety of crops to ensure a well-rounded harvest. Um, you don't want to just plant cucumbers and not plant anything else because what are you going to eat the cucumbers with? So maybe you do some cucumbers, you do some lettuce. Well, it's the same thing. Sometimes what you'll find is I, when I started investing, years ago with and it was with an employee sponsored or employer sponsored retirement plan i would always diversify i'd go in mutual funds 100 percent of the time because that's what was the first lesson in Susie orman's nine step to financial freedom but what i would do is i would have a mutual fund that was a domestic fund and i would have a mutual fund that was an international fund because back in those times when the american economy was doing well then foreign economies were struggling and when foreign economies were doing well that's when american economies were uh, struggling and so it's good to diversify because then you're able to play off and again if you speak to a financial professional they'll be able to help you create your accounts in such a way that you can take advantage of upswings in the market and limit your risk during the downswings in the market. Now, it's all good to, to put your money in, to water it and to nurture it, but there's also going to be risk. And so we'll liken that to weeds in the garden. And that really comes around managing your risk. You know, No garden is complete without a few weeds trying to take over. In retirement planning, those weeds represent risks and obstacles like debt, like unexpected expenses, poor financial decisions. And folks, we all have them. I could go back and do a whole video. I can do a whole series on financial mistakes that I've made. And so, again, always remember, practice doesn't make perfect. Perfection doesn't exist. Practice makes improvement. And so you want to continue to improve. So once you make the mistake once, then just commit to yourself that you're going to try not to make that mistake again. Um, and, and, and just as you would regularly weed your, your garden to protect your plants, you need to regularly review and adjust your financial plans. One of the things that was really big for me when I would look at my accounts coming up is I didn't have a lot of trust in the financial system. I didn't have a lot of trust in investing. And when I was growing up, people weren't talking about investing. And in fact, I didn't learn about investing at a most basic level until somebody, a 401k company came in and talked to the job and talked about it. Because when I was in high school and they talked about compound interest, like many of you, it didn't make sense to me. But I would look at the money that I put in and let's say I put in a hundred dollars. Next thing you know, it's one hundred and twenty-five, hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. And so I'm making money off of this hundred dollars I put in, and I just thought it was incredible. And there were other times when when things would happen where there's volatility in the market and it would go down. But I always thought that was just a cool exercise uh, to do. And in fact, one of the things that I recall. Uh, at one point in my career was Yahoo had this mock investment tool. So you could buy, you could put in stocks and you could don't have to buy them, but it would show you put the ticker symbol in. And over time, you can look and see how that performs. And I think I put in like a million dollars, uh, fake a million dollars, never had a million dollars in my pocket. So let's let's be very clear. And it grows a two million, three million, four million. So I realized that there's really something to this. And that was just individual stocks. So when you take um, mutual funds, a lot of times you'll have the funds themselves, which com are comprised of a set of stocks. 
but you also have dividends that come in on those stocks that are reinvested. And so every time a dividend comes in, let's say it's a $25 dividend and you put in $100, just by default of owning that stock, you now are going to have $125 that all get reinvested. And that $125 is what, what grows all the time. So as you continue to review and adjust your plans, that could mean rebalancing your portfolio, paying down some debt, adjusting your spending habits. And I know there's a lot of differing opinions about paying down debt and having debt when you invest. And I believe that sometimes it's the investing that helps you pay down the debt because one of the vehicles to invest is a high return or high uh, interest savings account. And so sometimes you get these high interest savings accounts, you put the money in there, realize that you, and it's after tax dollars, you could take that money out and use that to pay off debt. But I think it's always important to make sure that you don't lose the most valuable asset in your retirement, which is time. Because if you wait until you get out of debt to start investing for retirement, then you lose the time that you would have had otherwise in the market. And most of the time, and this can get really complicated, so I suggest that you speak to a financial professional about this. But one of the things that you wanna think about is the cost of the money that you have. And so, for example, there's people with 2% interest or interest rates on their houses. And they say, well, I just want to pay off my house and put that money in the market. And that's fine. But then do you make what's the cutoff? And so do you make more than what you're spending on your house? If you're making 5% on your house, and you're only making 3% in the market, and you're paying 2% in interest, does it make sense, so on and so forth. So again, these are kind of complicated conversations that you would have with a financial professional that can that can help you make some of the right decisions. Um, and sometimes the, the adjustments can mean just adjusting your spending habits. What you find is, what I found is, is that my spending habits adjust over time. So I have my retirement stuff that I use to manage expenses and, and for my retirement. And then I have my normal cash flow stuff that I use for day to day stuff. And so my idea is I never wanted to touch my retirement funds. And if I was broke, I was broke because I didn't have the cash flow to cover current expenses. And I would go through the struggle of managing those current expenses so as not to touch my retirement account. So it my retirement accounts continued to grow. And you have to stay vigilant because anybody that gardens, and, and I deal with this every day, it's 100 degrees outside and I still deal with it, is if you don't take care and pull the weeds, then those weeds will will take over your garden. And how many of us in life have, and let me know in the comments if, if this you relate to this, but how many of us in our lives have had situations that just got out of control. They got out ahead of us and we couldn't control them anymore. And so you have to stay vigilant because if you don't, you run the risk of your financial situation getting out of control. And next thing you know, you're my age and you're just starting to put money in panicking about what you're going to do when you get to the point where you can't work anymore uh, in your in your in your field or, or whatever the deal is. And And keep an eye out and address issues early. A lot of times people have a tendency to see a small issue and say, oh, no, it's not that big of a deal. And folks, I've done that, too. Uh, but a lot of times you could prevent them from uh, choking out your, your financial growth, because when if you pull the weeds early, then your weeds will not have the opportunity to take over the roots of your of your other plants or your vegetables. And so if you get with them early and those are weed issues, those are pest issues, any type of issue. So you want to make sure that you keep an eye on it and always, always be vigilant and be as proactive as you can with adjusting with adjusting those. And then the last part of it is the fun part. It's harvest time. It's when you have cucumbers or when you have beans or when you have pumpkins or when you have onions or when you have tomatoes or when you have collard greens or when you have whatever it is that you grow in your watermelon, whatever it is that you grow in your garden. I think I've just named off most of what uh, I thought I had is <laughs> that I'm growing this year. But this is when you enjoy the fruits of your labor. After all your hard work, it's finally harvest time. Uh, you know, this is where all of your planning, your nurturing, and your weeding has paid off. 
In retirement, your harvest is the financial independence and security that you've built over the years. And most importantly, it's the time where you have full control over your time and you can use your time fully to invest into meeting your goals, uh, meeting your objectives, doing the things that you want to do, dealing with the people that you want to deal with as opposed to as opposed to someone else. And you start living life on your own terms. And so reap what you sow and enjoy your entire retirement. One of the things kind of as a bonus, I think, is is funny to share on a personal note is in my gardening, I have a compost pile or I have a compost tumbler. And so what I did was one year I took that compost tumbler and it was about three years ago and there was a bunch of unprocessed compost and it was just taking too long. So I emptied out the compost tumbler and put a and put it all into the ground, into a hole in the ground and covered it up and used that to grow pumpkins and spaghetti squash and a few other things. Well, lo and behold, there was a there was a plant that was growing out and I had no idea what it was. And I have this thing about killing plants that are bona fide plants and not weeds. So I left it there, folks. It turns out that that plant is two avocado trees. And so now I have two four foot high avocado trees in my yard that I did not know I was planting as a bonus. And anybody that's grown and please let me know if you have this experience. Anybody that's grown avocado uh, trees knows how difficult it is to grow avocado trees. And I have two avocado trees that I didn't plant. And my wife loves avocados. And we put those in the compost. And those. And next thing you know, those avocado, uh, avocado seeds sprouted. And I have two avocado trees that are probably about two years from producing. So it takes about five years for avocado trees to, to produce. So it's, it's just an incredible, incredible thing. So I, my point being is you might go through all of this rigor and end up with a pleasant surprise at the end when it is time for your harvest. So remember that retirement should be a time to enjoy the benefits of the seeds you planted and cared for throughout the years. Whether it's traveling, spending time with family, pursuing hobbies, this is your time to harvest the rewards. And on a side note, one of the things that I'm really excited about is next week is the opening for the Master Gardener program. So I'm going to be able to take time and really understand gardening so I don't have to worry about getting lucky or hope I'm getting it right or run to the nursery every time there's an issue because I will have the opportunity to learn the science behind the gardening in a way that I didn't before, but I wouldn't have been able to do that if I was working. So just like retirement, I'm sorry, just like gardening, retirement requires patience, care, and regular attention. Start early, nurture your investments, manage your risk, and eventually you'll be able to enjoy a beautiful harvest. So that's about all I had for today. But if you like this content in any way, or you find it helpful or useful, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I put up content a couple of times a week, and if you hit that, uh, that notification bell, You'll see not only when my long form videos like this go up, but what you'll also see is you'll also see the shorts. So I take the pertinent information from these videos and break it out into YouTube shorts through the course of the week. So that way it continues to re-energize and re-motivate us because I, I do recognize that the path to retiring is a, a long and arduous one. Uh, it doesn't seem realistic for a lot of us, but at the end of the day, it's not only about retirement, but it's about uh, retirement is a word that we give in our language to um, really speak to the time where we own our own lives, our own existences and so on. And so uh, so getting to the point where you have full control of your time is really where you're trying to go. And I think that, you know, we'll find you if you if you're able to do that, you don't need to have a bona fide quote unquote retirement, but you'll be you'll be living your best life. So. Um, but again, I know that life happens, it's difficult, and it's it just doesn't seem like it's ever going to come. And trust me, folks, at 51, it came, and I'll never look back. So happy gardening, happy retirement planning. This is Sabado. Have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon.